Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I'm an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast, I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand in watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are. It is Monday, May the 31st, the last day in May. I hope everyone had a a very nice Memorial Day. My name is Clyde J. Kale, and I'm here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And you folks are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 99, basically our last regular podcast. So, hi, Diane. How you doing? Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everybody. I'm okay. doing great. <laughs> Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. All right. Um, for this episode, if our listeners go to www.talkartpodcast.com, talkartpodcast.com, there's uh, some video links. And... Um, I ask the question, we've tried to answer this question before, but I've asked the question of um, why we create art. And the what got me thinking about, we're going to see if we can go deep on this conversation. I don't know how deep we'll go, but um, more of the, uh, the Kandinsky video, uh, I didn't know that much about him. But uh, the presenter mentioned something that I had heard of before of uh, people throughout the years and centuries. People have had developed a certain sense, like a fourth sense or a fifth sense or whatever, of where if they listened to music, they could hear colors. If they looked at colors, they could hear music or different sounds. And that's. I'd read that before, and I thought, well, somebody is taking a lot of drugs, especially if in the 60s, people take a lot of LSD. That was a big thing, buddy. Yeah, they, they were on. Yeah. So that was always, I always kind of just, you know, shirked it off as, well, either <laughs> just too, too much drugs, too much medication, you know. And, but in reality, it's a unique phenomenon that is only in like some, one every 20,000 humans and Kadinsky had it from the time he was a child. He, and in fact, his entire life, it was never really diagnosed until after his death when scientists started uh, investigating because they found some other people, you know, had it. And f- when he was a child, uh, he would complain about the colors were talking to him. He was hearing sounds with the colors and his parents just thought, Oh, he's just being a child. You know, and uh, 
it got me a thinking about, you know, and, and the, uh, that with, uh, with artists, maybe that is something that is, uh, uh, divine and divinely, uh, instituted in, in artists that if we don't actually hear colors, hear or hear music or sounds with colors and we don't actually see with sounds we see color the way Kandinsky did we do in another sense and Kandinsky was very big on later in later years studying the the theosophy of you know the different arts and the the um, um, uh, spiritual aspect of art which is how you know how he, he you know, developed his art so that's where I'm coming from uh, that, um, we, uh, you know, as artists, some art, cause, cause how many times have we seen an artist who was just highly skilled and was able to paint a still life and it looked realistic and everything, but then it, they didn't go anywhere. They didn't, they didn't make it. They didn't, you know, and, but another artist whose still life is not even rendered as well. It's just like. Everybody is Google Gaga over it. You know, it is quite possible. Like when uh, Stefan Bauman, you know, in, in his discussion, he says, uh, maybe the artist was painting for the viewer instead of painting for I, I, I artists, you know, how many times, you know, we read all these different artist statements and, and this is the gallery's faults and exhibitions that require us to, to write an, an artist statement. And they use flowering language. Oh, this expresses my feelings of uh, when I was divorced and blah, 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 blah. Or when I was was feeling uh, distressed, this is how this pain. And some viewers may pick that up, but most viewers don't care. Uh, it is the art has to be, if the art is painted with the intention and with that divine influence of, of uh, reaching the soul of the viewer, those are the ones that are successful. Diane, what's, what's some of your thoughts on that? Hmm. Well, <laughs> I, think, I think everybody has a different reaction to when they look at artwork and isn't necessarily the same reaction that the artist was um, putting into it um <clears throat> so i don't know you know i mean i can look at some even the three between the three of us we can all look at the same piece of artwork and it might move me and it might do nothing for you two <laughs> you know so it's like i i don't know i think it's um an individual thing i don't think it's um something that the artist can really put into the artwork and, you know in with that kind of intention that people would see the same thing i don't i don't know if it would work that way but i i mean when i'm working i usually you know pieces of my soul are going into my artwork whether somebody else can see that or not i don't you know it's, it's not really up to me it's it's just how it comes across i guess constance what uh, what's your what's your thoughts on on that um I think that, um, well, this is a mean thing. I think that people connect with your artwork when they come across it. Not all artwork is for everybody. Everybody who connect, that's why we all have different styles of painting because different people are going to connect with different work. I mean, what might resonate with one person won't resonate with the next person. Um, so, but um, Kandins Kandinsky's work, and I had not heard of colors being music notes before, and I thought that was kind of cool, and that there are people in the world who see music notes as color, and I, and I really, yeah. that was very unusual to me because I've never heard of it before, but that was kind of neat. Well, I'd heard of it myself, but like I said, I shirked it off as somebody taking too much drugs. Yeah. 
because it's <laughs> yeah. Especially in the sixties, everybody who was taking LSD that was uh, that was a big reason. Oh, especially for art. Oh, it just it expands my mind. And it, of course, you know, psychotropic tropic drugs will do that to you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's well, not good. <laughs> it's hot, and then you get up and paint. You're going to make some some interesting paintings. Yeah. <laughs> but from a to have it naturally, that is what I, I found fascinating. You know, and, and uh, but the more I thought about it, it uh, yes, with these individuals, it's super intense. But I think with all artists who are truly creative. It's there. That might be. That's the uh, you know the, the 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 right brain element. You know, that is uh, that is that is working, and this is why you have uh, some artists. You know, some, that's why not everybody in the world is an artist. I mean, right. you can go. You, can, we our societies have gotten so advanced. You know, and in in our teaching, you can go to school. And you can learn how to draw. And you can learn how to paint. To Doesn't add, mean you're going to like it if you are not don't have the tendencies to want to be an artist or painter. Absolutely. Just because you can doesn't mean that you like it. And I'm, not, you, I'm not putting down people who are hobbyist paintings and drawers. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. Mm -mm. But to reach a certain level of like Stefan Baum is to reach that level of to where, where you see, and then you see again. And then the people who look at your art, they also see. And of course, you know, there's the standard, you know, the, with the light and the shading and the color temperature, and there's all that, you know, that helps you. These are tools for you to express what you are actually seeing when you, when you look at that, at that, item that you're that you're painting because yeah yeah no, i was to say it's it's relating it to like music it's the same thing i mean you could yeah you know, how many kids <laughs> take music lessons every year and you know play for years and years and take lessons and how many of those kids actually go on to become you know musicians in big orchestras and or right. you know, become famous <clears throat> as a musician or even like a basketball player or something I mean, so many people play basketball, but there's only a certain number of people that go on to be the top players in the world. Right. It's, you, there's a lot more to it than just um, knowing the notes or knowing the, you know, your your materials. Or you know, you, there's uh, yeah, you have a whole to other level. It, you know, I mean. mm -hmm. and that's that's what got me thinking about this discussion. We're, you know, we're going to go deep because that's the the figuring the the, the figuring out why why is that what causes that and of course you know there are there are uh, historians there are critics there are philosophers that have spent ages studying that you know and we certainly are not going to come up with the answer the three of us here but to me i found it fascinating because all three of us have admitted that if we uh weren't creating art we'd be doing something creative we can't we, we can't help ourselves we're born with it mm -hmm. and what is that spark what is that that uh you know uh is, is it a gene or is it a, you know and, and that's it's the, god's gift to you is the way i look at it what i look at i take the more spiritual and the more divine issue that it's it was Put that seed in there, and it's there, and you're supposed to use it. <laughs> it's something that we're passionate about, though. It's like, um, I mean, other people could be passionate about baking cakes or something. You know, it's, but, yeah. uh, I'm not interested in that at all. <laughs> you know, I'd rather do something with paint and and drawing and painting and, you know, creating things like that, artwork. Other people want to work on car engines, and, you know, it's like, whatever their passion is. Well, that's like, if you have a passion for something, you're going to spend a lot more time doing it for one thing. And it's something that you will do, whether you're getting money for it or not. And it's, it's just um, something that's ingrained in your, 
being. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That, and what got me thinking about this too was, you know, I, uh, before we started uh, folks, I, uh, I was showing my first painting in a new series I've started of, uh, of their, I'm paint I'm emulating like the ancient frescoes that were in Pompeii and Herculaneum. And when I came up with that idea, I mean, I've always wanted to enjoy painting uh, uh, or, or drawing or creating uh, the, uh, the ancient ruins because I, when I lived over in Italy, I visited them so many times. I think I visited Pompeii and Herculaneum in Italy about probably four times in my life. But um, when I came up with this ideal, this fresco recreation, fresco emulation thing, and then I actually did this first painting. I had so much fun. It gave me so much enjoyment because as it was coming, coming into completion and I should have took, took, should have took photos of each step because in my mind, I had in my mind what I was going to do, what I wanted to look at. Yeah. And then it was actually my hands were doing it. And I, but at the same time, it was giving me, so it was satisfying that inner inner uh, desire to promote these these ancient peoples, yeah, you know, because they were basically the, the their art is the foundation of all art today. I mean, the Renaissance came about because influenced by their these ancient you know ruins because they they were rediscovered and excavated about the same time when the Renaissance was going on. And all the great masters had visited and seen these images and, and were inspired and, and motivated, you know. And uh, the same way with the, the art from the, you know, the classical art from, uh, from uh, Greece and Athena and th that area and influenced a little bit from the Egyptian, you know, type art with the colors and the patterns and, and, and what whatnot. But uh, so I've always wanted to promote that, you know, to share that with people, but in a unique manner, you know, that was my, my style. And I, and I've come, come up with, so I came up with this, this hit me I, like I crossed this threshold. And I'm so excited. But then after it's all done and it's sitting and drying, and I'm looking at it, and I'm chuckling to myself. You know, ah, you hit a right clock. Look at that. You just, I mean, I'm saying these things to myself. I start thinking, why? Why did I do that? Why did it hit such a, such a point? And then, of course, I posted on Facebook. I had several very positive comments, you know, people who you know, liked them on Facebook. That, And then I told them, you know, in the comments, what I was doing, what I was attempting to do. And everybody said, yeah, bullseye, you hit it. You hit the mark. You hit, you know, that made it even better for me. Yeah. <laughs> so all this, you know, I'm smoking my pipe. That's pipe tobacco, folks. That's why I'm smoking. <laughs> okay. And these things are coming through my mind. I'm thinking, you know, and then, of course, Stephen Bauman's videos, when he talks about, you know, he says, you don't know what you don't know. And uh, the color using color temperatures and everything. It says you have to you have to look, you have to see, and then you have to see again. You have to see whatever you are looking at, and express and put it on canvas with paint and whatnot and color, so that the viewer also sees that. And when you achieve that, then and he said, and you know. In your own heart, you know when you achieve it. Am I right, Diane? Do you know when you actually are satisfied with a painting? Do you, do you feel um, <laughs> I don't know that I ever am because I, the more I look at it, the more I want to <laughs> make adjustments or something. But anyway, um, but as far as seeing color, I think that the more you look at stuff, the more colors you see. And I, I know that because people that aren't artists, you tell them, like, look at all the different colors of green, like in the trees or something. <laughs> they just, like, it's all one green, you know? <laughs> they don't see, like, yeah. <laughs> they don't see all the nuances of different yeah. colors and blues and yellows. Yeah, the more you look at stuff, 
you can really, um, and the more you spend time with doing that, the more variations and stuff you can see. And tr trying to explain that to somebody that isn't an artist, that they just don't see it. All I see is <laughs> one green tree. <laughs> it's like when you were a kid, you know, the, there was, all the trees had brown trunks and a green lollipop top, and that was it. <laughs> you know, one color. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as you get more developed, you see more and more colors. And some people think it's like you're making up colors because they don't see it there. And right. Your eyes, just, their eyes are not trained to see everything you see. Yeah. You do have to train yourself to see the art. The, I can remember taking a class from, from uh, Susan Sarbach, and she's the one who, who she's the full color seeing. And she tells you just to swing yourself back and forth with your hands over your eyes closed. Not press them really hard, but just stand there for like a minute and just go back and forth. And then lift your hands off your eyes and just keep swinging back and forth and let your eyes go back and forth and then just open them and then you can see all the color and then if you can't see it then do it again <laughs> until you learn to see all the color you know and then you eventually you'll get it you know it, it takes practice but you can get it you know so yeah well anyhow i think we're gonna we're gonna wrap this episode up and we didn't probably get to go as deep as I wanted, but I, I had a hard time, you know, uh, expressing what I was, you know, what I was thinking. Maybe I was just thinking too much. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go, our next episode will be our 100th episode of the Artist Friends Podcast. And we are also going to do it's going to be more of a a uh, like an, an opening night we are going to have some of our works of art available to show and to uh talk about and we are also having an online exhibition of of that those art so people visitors can go to the exhibition and i'm going to keep it keep the page up for about two months uh, but uh, it will be uh, after the recording of the uh, of, of the podcast, and it will be a video podcast. We'll have an audio version and a video version, you know. And the video version will be on the website with the uh, exhibition, so uh, you folks can, uh, you know, visitors can uh, look at that and actually see what we look like. <laughs> disappointed, you know. That our Hopefully, we won't scare anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but we thought this would be special for our uh, our 100th episode of the artist friends podcast so that will be the the next one coming up would be the uh june the first uh the first monday in june and uh providing all the technical glitches get resolved because oh boy <laughs> every time i try to do something with the computers it seems like they don't want to cooperate <laughs> I've had my hands full, you know, trying to put this thing together, put everything together. But uh, we will resolve it, and we will have something up, you know, for our listeners, and this time it'll be for our viewers, you know, to, uh, you know, check it out. But with that, this is you've been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode ninety nine for May the thirty first. This is Clyde J. Kale, and I have been talking with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson, my two best artist friends. And I'm going to say bye to Diane and Constance. Let Diane say goodbye to everybody. Bye, Clyde. Bye, Constance. Good night, everyone. Bye, bye. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. <laughs> Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. And thanks for listening. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for listening. And as always, if you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up, a star rating. And uh, even you know, send us an email. Let us know uh, how uh, if you enjoy and uh, these uh, you know what we're talking about. And uh, you're always if you're an artist or if you're just a collector or interested in art, you're always welcome to actually join us. And um, you can uh, come into the uh, Zoom. We meet on uh, every Monday on with Zoom. And you don't have to participate in the podcast. We usually talk about 30, 40 minutes before we start the recording. So we'll get to know you and you can answer, we can answer questions for you. And then if you don't want to participate in our podcast, I'll put you on mute and you can be our live audience, which 
we'll get a kick out of that. So bye folks. And we'll see you next time. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C B R O S N A N S Clyde J Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.